what you can do, right? You can gobble a load of creosote on it. You can get your cuprin oil. You can paint it pink. You can paint it blue. You can paint it polka dot. But you're still going to have to keep painting it. So what we need on this job is something that's going to preserve this wood. Um, a fit and forget job. So what we found um, is a technique called Shoshukiban. Now Shoshukiban is a, um, a really old wood preserving technique from Japan. Um, and it involves burning the wood. Uh, and that brings the oils out of the timber. And uh, Now spruce uh, is quite... Um, a sappy kind of wood so it's full of oil so when we heat it up that oil comes to the, to the surface of the timber and then as that oil burns uh, it turns the carbon and that, that uh, preserves the wood so this should last a lot longer than 10 to 15 years uh, so um, what we do with this process uh, is we get a blow lamp This particular blow lamp's only a little baby one, so you probably would be better with like a big um, felt roofing sort of uh, blow lamp, something with a big flame. But this is quite, uh, it's quite a useful uh, little tool. So what we do, uh, we just get this going. Woo! 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 Right. So let's just start at this end. What we're going to do is just ever so slightly just torch that timber. Yeah. Do that down a bit. Fire from the water. So you can see how we're just scorching that wood there. Pretty much just setting it on fire. And as it's burning, all those oils out of that timber are coming to the surface of the timber and they're, they're igniting, all those gases are burning there. So be really, really careful not to set fire to the entire planet. So, on hand, we have got our sprayer. We should be needing that because it's quite quite careful. It's a windy day, it's not too hot. So we're just scorching all this timber here until we get to that point where it's just starting to crack. Oh, the Shosugi Ban is a Japanese method of uh, preserving timber. And if we look at the etymology of the, uh, the words, so the shaw, oh, the shaw is Japanese burn or char. The sugi uh, comes from the Japanese word for uh, cedar. Now apparently, the story goes that back in the 1600s, um, there was an emperor who was quite poor at the time. One of the shoguns helped him out in a battle. So when this shogun died, he couldn't offer any gold, he couldn't offer any stone, you know, he couldn't offer anything of uh, means really. So what he did was he planted uh, some Japanese cedars in a big long row in a particular uh, province back in the 1600s. And that row of uh, Japanese cedars is still there to the day. Uh, and the ban comes from the Japanese word for plank. So basically, Shosugi Ban simply means burn cedar plank. Now these aren't, <coughs> these aren't cedar boards. Like I said, they are uh, spruce. Now cedar is an incredibly resinous wood. Uh, it's very water repellent, it's disease resistant, it's fire resistant. So you can enhance the properties of your cedar timber, your cedar house. Uh, by doing the short Sugi Ban method. So, um, we're just burning these planks here, as simple as that. Uh, we've got all the knots there, we've got to make sure we get into all these nooks and crannies. All underneath gets burnt, everything gets burnt and charred. Uh, there was methods of doing it in the old days where they would set bonfires, just feed the timber into the bonfire. And then that char brings all of those resins to the surface, pull them out, and then you'll see exactly what we do in a little while. So it's an incredibly good method of preserving wood. And when you burn the wood, they cause, it does cause a degree of shrinkage. So I wouldn't advise doing this on green timber. So if this was straight from the mill, straight from B&Q, just leave it for a little bit. These, this cladding's been on for about six months now. Uh, so all the shrinkage has already happened. So the sun's been beating down on it. 
we've had a winter of like wind and cool weather uh, so this this uh, these thin boards should be a bit, an optimum dryness so say it does create like a degree of shrinkage in the timber um, uh, and it, it prevents it warping as well so with the feathering boards uh, you can't see because he's done a hell of a good job of cladding it but the top end of the board is quite thin uh, so we won't get any splitting in that now um, and the short sugi band method creates this beautiful patina so that patina will start like it'll fade a little bit with age uh, and it's really unique you know it looks like it's been done with creosote but we haven't used any chemicals in this all it is is fire and wood you know it, if we were to creosote this we'd have to do it every couple of years and it'd smell like you're driving through the Wirral it's like a chemical plant we don't want that so this is just as natural as you can get it you know it hasn't cost all it's cost is a bit of gas a bit of time you know and that's about it so um, what else it's just it's incredibly unique as well so if you look at the uh, if you just stand back a little bit we've line pointed this wall and look at the contrast there that is beautiful it doesn't stand out for when you're driving up the road you're not going to see this like uh, this gaudy horrible softwood you're just going to see this beautiful blended in uh, and it'll connect the line the starters to the line the timber to the stakes and the solar panels so it's quite like an um you know, it's aesthetically pleasing. So we'll just get to the top of the window here, um, and then we shall uh, we'll show you the next method, what we do afterwards. So there's quite a few different uh, ways of finishing this timber. Uh, with, because it's brought the natural oils to the surface of the wood, we don't have to stain it with anything, but once we've finished it with the next part of the process, uh, you, can, you can oil it, but it doesn't particularly need it. You can see there, as we went over it, the oils came to the surface then started bubbling. So we know that uh, this is water, it's, you know, it's weather resistant is this. Um, so it will be like a, a, a lot more uh, water repellent than if we were to paint it. Uh, it's insect repellent. You know, we just have a lot of horse flies up here, so they don't bother with timber. But if you live in a part of the world where you get like termites, they're not going to go near this because at the surface of the timber we've got a lot of, um, a lot of this, well this is basically just carbon so if I was a little like uh, a little timber bug I wouldn't want to be eating a piece of coal I'd be wanting to eat some fresh timber uh, so we haven't got any fresh timber here so we're going to be termite resistant up here um, and this is like uh, we're in the depths of Lancashire which isn't particularly known for a vast number of termites so we just keep, it's quite a slow method, so like I say, if you had a bigger blowtorch, uh, you could do this a lot quicker. You know, we're getting paid by the hours to span the job out. We keep burning it like that. We'll just do this one more board, and then we'll show you the next, next part of the process. So we just got over this just once with the burner. Uh, but you can do a repeat, repeat amounts. You can even get it to really char, so when you've had your bonfire, day after you come back and fire's gone out, you always have them bits that have been burned, charred and scorched, you get ripples and cracks in the wood, so you, can, you, can, uh, you can play around with it at home and just see to what, what kind of like final effect you want from this bit of timber. Um, I've done this in the past on uh, mantel pieces. Um, and I've done some arms just messing them out with it. And it, like I say, it colours to like a beautiful grey colour. Uh, it's really nice finished effect on the, on the timber. You don't have to be a specialist. I've only done this three or four times. You know, and it's uh, some, of the, some of the pieces of timber I've left outside just to see how the weathering affects it. And it's still there. Uh, it's, it's not right away. No termites have been. Uh, it's good to go. It's beautiful. Like that, you can see all them, all that resin coming out of that, all them oils coming out of the timber there, it's bubbling up and you can see how it's come to the surface. So that's happening over that top couple of millimetres of all this wood. So simple, anyone can do it. I mean, obviously, if you're, uh, if you're working on an incredibly dry building, if you're in like a desert area, 
you probably need more than your uh, your sprayer. Have a bucket of water. I'm even even all spider about. The last thing you want is to spend three years building your cabin. Do this and burn the bugger down. So like there, where where the uh, where the clients uh, missed overlapping the um, cloud nails. Might potentially supply them coming this year in the future, but like, it's not going to be right. The termites won't have eaten it, so it won't be a problem for us. We'll let someone else climb up the ladders. But well, this scaffold's coming down this week, so before we've got to hurry up and get this job done uh, before the scaffold comes down. Yeah, we're nearly there now, so a little bit more to do here. In fact, what we'll do. So just like, we'll hurry up here as fast as we can. I know you've got to pick the kids up fairly quick, so you want, to, you want us to hurry up. Bob. There we are. So it's way of burning it. It's just starting to crack a little bit. So that's, that's just what we want there. Pull that knot. We don't have to, uh, all the knots, just four of it, burn them. That's that knot there. Burning it. Nothing fancy, just keep burning, burning, burning. You see there how that timber's tied to crack? So you can keep going, keep burning that. You can have that, that uh, cracked effect across all over the board if you want. A little bit left to do there. So what we'll have to do, is because it's feather edge boards, We'll get water collected and dripping off these bits. So, just do down there. Scorch that last little bit. So here, the lime. That's already been burnt, so we can't burn the lime. But you see where the um, so originally this, this profit was rendered and painted. As we we're going over that, you can smell the paint burning. I'll be getting out of the kite here breathing this in. Scorch that up. Do that end grain there. You'll find that when you're doing the end grain, it'll pull a lot more of the oils down the wood than coming across the grain. So you've got to be a little bit more careful when you're burning the end grain it will catch fire a bit easier than doing the, uh, the side grain, if you will. I've got, sorry, I don't know what the right terminology is for that. It sounds good. A little bit more there. You see in that knot how all that oil's coming out. The last little bit. Yeah, got a little bit there to do, so... Like I said, where the water's been running off the end of the... Uh, Feather edge board, let's go along, make sure that's completely combusted there. Run along, just like that. Hey, I'll tell you what would be an ideal two foot job. Remember that, that flamethrower that Elon Musk was about making? That'd be ideal for this, wouldn't it? Pull them flames out. Pull there. Uh, right, so that's the burning process done. Uh, we put some of that water, set it on fire, uh, wedge it in there. So now, there's two various ways that you can finish it. Put that fire stick in there. Um, so you can either wire brush it, but what we found is that when you wire brush it, it takes a bit too much of the carbon off for what we want for this job. So you'll take it back to clean wood there, what you can do is you can fire it again, but what you've got to be careful of, yeah, we'll show you. I'll tell you what, we'll show you, show how we finish it. So we've just used a soft bristle brush, well, quite a hard bristle brush, that. Uh, just scrub along it, like that. It's a way of brushing that surface carbon off, and it's just revealing that grain. See that? Give it a good brush. Don't be scared, it's not made of glass. 
and look at that. That beautiful patina in the wood that comes out there. It follows the grain. And you could be, you could, you know, I'd say you could have it whatever kind of finish you want. So all that oil's come to the surface there. Right, we'll do down here. Just like that. So, uh, so I'll show you what we do. Um, so we've played around with going in with the wire brush. You see how you, you're almost going back to you're almost going back to the, uh, the spare wood then. But we give it a second dressing with the uh, the blowtorch, and we'll show you what happens then. There's a lot of oil in the, in the top surface of this uh, timber now. So this catches fire a lot easier than this. See how it's burning, it's behaving differently. So them oils are combusting even more there. So when you do that second coat, if you want to do the second coat, you've got to be incredibly careful. Because the timber's a lot more flammable now. Go over it again. You get a bit of a darker hue to the timber once you go over it the second time. So just have a play around with it, you see what kind of effect that you want if you want to do it at home. Uh, then we don't need to use the wire brush anymore on that. So we can just go in again. You can see then it's how it shines a little bit more, and the grain just just uh, reveals a little bit more of the grain. So if we had if we did have a bigger blow torch, I'd be more probably more tempted to go over it a second time. Uh, but that's a perfectly. Uh, I'm more than happy with that finish. Uh, you can do it. You can you can do this on absolutely any kind of timber at home. You've got your old, your granny's old chair. You can burn all that varnish. Well, do it outside. Don't do it in your living room. Burn all that varnish off back to the bare wood. Uh, show Sugi ban it, and you got like a, that beautiful finish. And then you can uh, you can oil it then, get a beautiful luster to the uh, to the grain. So we'll carry on and do it a little bit more. We'll come back at the end and have a look what it looks like. Right, so we've, uh, we've finished the cladding. It's all uh, it's all cladding now with the uh, the Shiba Sugi ban. I'm really impressed with how this has turned out. It's absolutely incredible. Um, just finished in time for this rain shower to arrive. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna, gonna get out of the scaffold now, put the panels back on. Um, we're hoping to uh, put kettle on, but with this rain shower, I don't know if it'll be any electric for us, but at least the uh, the cladding's done. Scaffold can come down. We can crack on with another job now.